So in our next demonstration, I'm going to show you another way of interfacing with MATLAB Coder, and in this case for code generation and integration. So here we are back in MATLAB, and in this case, instead of using a build script, I'm going to show you another method. For those of you who may be new to MATLAB Coder or prefer to use more of a user interface that's graphical, if you type at the command prompt here, Coder, what will happen is you'll launch the MATLAB Coder app. And so essentially this is a really nice wizard to step you through the code generation process. And if you look here, you can actually start working with fixed point conversion. So I don't know if you saw that in my code earlier, but I had cast something as a double. Definitely there's a lot of advantages in starting to work with type conversions inside of your simulation environment. So you can more easily figure out, you know, maybe what the right data types are to use and maybe the right, you know, bit lengths and so on. So here we're not going to talk much more about fixed point. I'll maybe have some slides at the end to kind of highlight this. But in our case, we're going to want to generate code for, remember, our edge detection function, as well as how can we take advantage again of our Gaussian filter that we'd written earlier. So let's go ahead and hit browse. And you'll see here, I'm actually inside of my folder. And I want to here select my edge detection. Dot M. So this is the script, remember, single line of MATLAB code. And I also want to select my Gaussian filter. And we'll go ahead and click open, and you'll see they're both being added here. These are the entry point functions. All right, it's creating an actual project for me as well. And you'll see it's prompting me here to click next. So going to the next window here, you'll see it's asking you, you know, do you want to automatically define input? So what's really nice about this is, remember, we already had our, our test harness that we'd written earlier. So if you go to MATLAB, you can see here, remember we have our little test bench. Well, I actually want to call this test bench to actually auto-define my inputs. So if you go here, we can actually double click and I want to select my test.m. And what this allows you to do, if you click this, it will actually run the script, run the different code paths. And here we're actually figuring out, or it's trying to guess, what type of data types you want. And you can see they're doubles. Here's the resolution size, 720 by 1080. But what's nice here is you can actually start manipulating what type of data types. Here's a double, but you could actually start to be more constrictive and say, I want to do in dates, whatever, or start doing what unsigned in. So there's a lot of ways that even during the generation process, you can start trying to work with fixed point data types. All right, so let's go ahead and we're going to keep the defaults and move to the next screen. And here, we're going to actually be interfacing with MEX again. So you saw earlier how I used MEX more for as far as testing within my environment, working more with my deployed C code and de designing my MATLAB algorithms around that C. In this case, we're going to check for runtime errors. And what's going to happen if you click Learn More here, you can see why test with MEX. So what happens is this is going to actually auto build a MEX for me and essentially run a number of tests that look for all sorts of runtime issues that you may or may not find in more traditional debugging methods. So it's a really good litmus test to make sure your code is actually being generated properly. So let's go ahead and click this check for issues and it's going to run my test script as part of the test harness. And again, I've just time elapsed things to speed things up. And what you've seen here is we have a really nice message here saying no issues detected. So everything looks fine and we're ready to proceed to the next step. And here is where we actually are going to be generating a code. And before I do that, I want to show you, you do have as far as configuration over what's being done. For example, the build type. In our case, we want source code. But you could be also compiling as a MEX, again, as far as output. We could be creating a static library. We could be creating like a DLL or a standalone executable. And this is using another technology called MATLAB compiler. But also, we can be selecting not only C, C++ as the output, but we can be selecting the type of architecture. In our case, we're just picking a generic architecture, but you could actually take advantage of some other architectures that may be on more on the embedded side or maybe specific to maybe someone like AMD or Intel. And here, selecting maybe what type of as far as the architecture, is it going to be something like what's on the host computer? In our case, it's an x64 Intel platform. But you could be maybe building for a 32-bit, maybe some other type of type, maybe an embedded processor. And then also, here's the more settings. So you can go through 
tab by tab here to actually select more detailed configuration. In our case, what I want to do is just include the MATLAB source code as comments. So this is really nice because now you can see how the C code is correlated directly to the MATLAB code. So this is really just a nice feature just to help analysis and debugging. So let's go ahead and close this and let's go ahead and generate the code. Okay, so now we have generated the code. You'll see it popped up some of the results. Here we have our two entry point functions, edge detection and Gaussian. And here's our edge detection routine in C. So you can see it actually generated it. You can go through it line by line and it's created a lot of the supporting functions that actually help you to do edge detection. But what I really wanted to show you is here's our Gaussian filter dot C and if you scroll down you'll see there really wasn't any code generated except a line here to call my Gaussian implementation that I had written earlier. And so here's the comments. Remember this coder.ceval. Here it is in the MATLAB code in the comments showing what actually was called and what it was translated to. And to show you like where is this, if we go back to our MATLAB project, you'll see this code gen folder here. And if I go here under MEX and Gaussian filter, scroll down you'll see here is my C implementation it was actually just built so that's a, it is an object file and so that we're just calling this directly so we didn't create any new code related to the Gaussian filter but just took advantage of the existing C code that was inside of MATLAB and just to summarize our final demo you witnessed how I was able to not only generate maybe C code for the edge detection algorithm that I wrote in MATLAB, so that eliminated the need to do any hand translation. So we had a great starting point for edge. But also you saw with the Gaussian filter, we were able to just create an object file and just call that C directly. So really we were able to mimic exactly what we were doing in MATLAB and then have that be part of the code generation process. And so what it did is give you a great starting point for prototyping by creating a hybrid, if you will, of maybe new code, C code that you don't have already, but also combining that with existing code bases. So really the whole message is, you know, to prototype with proven code. This, is, this process allows you to leverage your existing code investments to minimize your risk and maximize reuse and really reduce your time to test and qualify the new code. You're only doing incremental builds in the sense that you're only adding new functionality that you may not have had previously. And the technologies we used to do this was from MATLAB Coder, and in more particular, the MATLAB Coder app. And again, coder.ceval, as you saw that in the comments, is how we actually integrated and used your existing C code, and in our case, a Gaussian filter.